do you believe in angels? I believe in angels, but I can tell you as a fact I've never seen one. So my guest, Joy Woodruff, is provoking me to jealousy. You know why? There were some weather conditions uh, and problems yesterday when she flew into this area to be at the studio to be a guest today. And who did you see at the airport? I saw my angel. Now, what's more important, the President of the United States or your angel? Hmm. As far <laughs> to see under to those see, It's pretty exciting to see an angel. It's, <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> I mean, I would get ecstatic over it. What did your angel look like? My angel's very tall. His name is Nathaniel. Uh, I've, I've been seeing him off and on for the last two years. Uh, he's dressed in, I don't know, angel garb, a little white thing with a big white wide belt and a kind of a banner and, type of thing. And what did he say to you? He really didn't say anything. He was just standing there. We had been switched from plane to plane because of technical problems and that happened twice and on the third plane we finally settled down and I saw him and I heard the Lord speak very clearly there there will be no more interference my goodness I don't know about <laughs> you but I'd sure like to have an angel say that to me I'd like to see an angel you know maybe before this show is over you might see an angel maybe Nathaniel will come but you know you look so happy and together but there was a time when you weren't so happy and together. Mm -hmm. There was a time when you were an alcoholic, when you mm -hmm. cursed like a sailor. <laughs> um, uh, how much did you drink at the worst? At the worst, you'd find me having probably three or four beers a day, up to half a quart of uh, hard liquor a day. You, you reached the end of the rope, so to speak. Yes, I did. And you, what did you do? You, you, you cried out to God? I was raised in church, Sid. Um, in denominational churches and I sang because I love music and I used to hear music as a little girl and I used to sing from the time I was three I loved to be in front of people and that was where I gained my acceptance and my love and I say this because I was living the life of what I knew was hypocritical because I was in church on Sunday singing gaining the attention and the love of the people and then I would go home and go back to the alcohol. And I just reached the point where I just was so miserable and was living such a lie that one morning when my children had got on the school bus to go to school, I was so sick and I felt so rotten that morning. And I dropped down on my knees and I screamed. I, I don't know how long I just screamed and cried before the Lord and I said, you've got to take this from me. You've got to do this. I can't do it. I can't stop. Please help me. And I never had heard a, a message about trusting in the Lord with your life, about being born again is the term that they use. I'd never heard that. I've heard that God was good, that, you know, we need to be good, but I'd never heard that there was a Savior that wanted my life and as I cried out to him and stayed there for a long time praying, when I got up, I was supernaturally healed. No more alcohol. I was totally delivered from that. And I found I didn't want to swear anymore. Now, it still slipped out sometimes out of habit, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to swear. I didn't want to, I was not even close to the person that hit the floor on her knees. Now, you would <laughs> think that something like that would mean she'd live happily ever after and ride on her horse out into the sunset, but no. Then, out of the blue, her husband leaves her. You must have been devastated. It was horrible. It was a very, very dark time in my life. And now I want to do a flashback right okay. now. As a child, you would hear things that other people didn't hear, but you didn't know they didn't hear. What, <laughs> what did you hear? My parents would take us for rides on weekends um, occasionally. And my sisters and I would get into the back seat and we'd go for a ride. And they loved to go through the country and over covered bridges. And we live in a beautiful area of, of, the, of the states. And when my sisters would be sitting by the windows, of course, I was the little one, so I got stuck in the middle. But I didn't care because I would hit the floor. And my parents never could understand why, but why I would hear music when I was down there. Um, the sounds, uh, I could hear choirs, I could hear instruments and voices. And it was beautiful music, just beautiful. And I really believe it was angel choirs then, but I didn't know it. 
That, that had to be so wonderful. But then your husband leaves. I mean, mm. your, your life is really, uh, here you thought you had it together. <laughs> now it's falling apart again. Mm -hmm. And you're in the kitchen, and now you had an amazing encounter. Tell me about that. I did. I was at the table, and I'd been reading the Bible. And I opened up, opened up um, I don't even remember where I was uh, reading, but it was like the sky opened again. It was like the same sounds that I heard when I was a child. And I mean, that was many, many years in between. Uh, and I heard voices. I heard the words this time. And I heard instruments. I heard a whole song being played. And I grabbed a piece of paper and I started writing down the words because I was so excited. I knew that I was hearing something very special. And I believe it was a song from God. You know, I feel the presence of God on this set right now. Mm -hmm. I believe that, that, I mean, how would you like to hear the words coming directly from heaven? The melody coming directly from heaven. I promise you, before this show is over, you will hear the songs of heaven. Don't go away. It's getting very, very supernatural, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Joy Woodruff, and Joy hears from heaven. And she just writes down the words, gets these melodies from heaven. They're the songs of heaven. And you know what? When you hear songs from heaven, you experience heaven on earth. So you went to this crazy church up in Toronto, Canada. Why did you go there? After my husband had left, even though I was hearing songs, I would study the Bible because what I was seeing in the Bible were people that were nothing like I was. They had lives that really were just incredible. And I kept saying to God, what do they have that I don't have? And I would study David and I'd say, God, why, why was David a, a man after your own heart? I want to be a woman after your own heart. What did he have? And I really believe that it was the why God drew me to Toronto, because I was in a church where um, they aren't teaching about being spirit-filled and about... So what happened in Toronto? Oh, in Toronto, I was there five minutes. And within five minutes, the Lord had met me in a very powerful way. And, and I say that literally knocked me down off my feet. I laid on the floor and just felt His love just... Question. Did you, I have to ask you this, did, did you cooperate when you say knocked you off your feet? <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It was like one minute I was standing and one minute I was on the floor and nobody was around me. And what, was, and, and, and what were you feeling? I, was, I just kept feeling the presence of God. I felt God loving me and accepting me for who I was. When I got up off that floor situation, He filled me with His Spirit. And I began speaking in tongues. And he told me, he says, I'm, I'm going to gift you with things that will be beyond your imagination. And it was the most wonderful experience. I, I'll never forget it. I don't even remember the drive home from Toronto. I don't even remember it because all I did was worship the whole time. I never had heard worship music. All those years, I would hear three hymns. And a hum. And a sermon, <laughs> And a hum. And, and we'd go home. And I heard worship, and it broke my heart to think that all those years I could have been worshiping God, and all I was getting was a hymn. And I begged him to give me worship music, music that would touch the hearts of people, to know him and to worship him, which is what he did. Now, you've written how many songs from heaven? Since that day, and I really did stop counting, I believe there must be around 300 songs now. But there was something bothering you. You not only heard the words, you had to write down 
the, the, <laughs> the music, and you don't play the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, you could pick out some notes, but mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't play the piano. So what happened? As I was seeking God, I would go into the woods by my house and I would pray. And I'd say, God, I don't, I don't know what it is. Now you've filled me with your spirit. What is it? And what do you want me to do? You're giving me all these songs. What am I supposed to do with them? I mean, here I live on top of a mountain. <laughs> what do you want me to do with them? I don't play a, the, an instrument. I don't have a band. What, what do you want? And one morning when I walked out there, I'll never forget it. It was springtime, and it's deep woods. And you don't smell things in the woods except leaves and, and woody smells. And as I, as I stood there praying with my eyes closed, I smelled the most incredible fragrance I had ever smelled. And it was what, like... Was it the flowers around? There were no flowers. It this was is winter. deep woods, yeah. I mean, the, the leaves weren't even out on the trees yet. And I smelled roses and Rose of Sharon and, 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 and all those beautiful flower smells, but I, I can't even describe it because I don't believe there's really a... Yes, it's called Jesus. So, in other words, <laughs> you were smelling the, the perfume, if you will, the incense yes. of Jesus. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So yes. what happened next? The Lord spoke to me at that moment, and He said, I've heard your prayer. You can open your eyes and you can look at me. And I began to weep because, you know, in our, in our prayers, sometimes we don't, we don't realize what we're asking for. And there I was facing a very holy God. And his, his blood, the blood of Jesus has made me acceptable to God. But my flesh, my humanness, realized that I was face to face with the living God. And I could not open my eyes. <laughs> but you know, God will never leave you empty. He always will give you something. And so as I wept before him and I said, I can't open my eyes. I just, I can't. I've wanted to see you and I can't. I can't do it. He said, then hold out your hands. And I held up my hands about like this. And I felt the Lord touch them, one on each hand. And he said, I am touching your hands. And from this day on, you will play every song that I've given you on the keyboard. You'll play, but I want you to remember that these songs are for the the deliverance, the healing, and the salvation of my children, and that it will be me singing my songs over my people, and that it will be me standing before you playing the keyboard. And from that day, um, it was shortly after that, I started receiving another song, and I went to my keyboard and started to plunk out the melody, which is what I would do, is just write down a note name for each syllable. And I heard the Lord say, stop. Now put your hands on the keyboard. And so I did. And I began to play the song that I was hearing, the whole accompaniment. No music, nothing. How could you do this? Did, uh, did <laughs> anyone teach you how to do these chords? No, I didn't even know chords. I couldn't even tell you what I was playing. You, you were telling me a, a very uh, accomplished musician, this was in a maximum security prison. Yeah. What, what did he say about your music? He had heard that I, my claim was that this was music from God. And I said, well, it really is because I don't write music and I don't even know what I'm playing. And he was taking care of the technical end of the music as we presented a, a service to the inmates. And when it was over and he was rolling up the coils of wire and he came over to me and very, he was adorable. He was really so cute. He's an older um, man and he said to me, sister, I know what you're saying is true because no one could play those chords and those sounds that I hear coming from the music. And he explained that some of the, the chords were for healing. Yeah, you know, I have this right here, and I know that uh, our viewers can't wait to hear your music, but uh, I love the title, Out of This World and Into His Presence. Tell me about this first song we're going to hear. The first song is uh, a vision that I had uh, when he gave me the song. And I literally saw the nations coming before his throne and dancing before him in the New Jerusalem and singing his praises all in one accord, one body, all dancing and the flavors of the dance from the nations. And what's the name awesome. of it? Awesome. City of Light. Look at the joy of this <laughs> song from heaven, City of Light. God and 
Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Joy Woodruff. I hope you like that music from heaven. When you received that music from heaven, describe what you saw. That particular song, I saw the throne of God in a, in a wonderful light, but I saw the multitudes of people dancing and singing and praising before him, and it was like an amber light that was just shining. It was all golden. It was just beautiful, just beautiful. Now, Joy, you don't particularly strike me as the type of courageous person that would go by herself to India. <laughs> How did you happen to do that? Well, through a series of, all I can say is d divine connections. When the Lord spoke to me in the woods and said, you will take my music around the world, I had never been anywhere except on a two-week mission trip to Jamaica. And I didn't see how that could ever happen. But one by one, he introduced me to people, one being a, a, a young man from India. And amazingly, he was from a, a group called His Majesty's Voice. And they were a worship team. And they had all the instruments, everything. And they said, come, bring your music. Tell me some miracles that you saw in India. Uh, and by the way, did that angel awesome. accompany you too? He did. I hope so. <laughs> he did. We saw him uh, at every single city where we did worship mm. concerts. Uh, he stood between us and the temples many times, uh, I believe, as protection. Tell, tell me some miracles you saw. Miracles, that. my. We saw, we did a healing service in a little village called Palamadu, India. We saw blind eyes opened. We saw the cancer leave a man's face. We saw a, a woman, the first miracle that I had ever been a part of, and I say a part of because it's just my, it's the Lord that does it. But I prayed for a woman, and she could hear for the very first time, and it was just amazing. I saw the tears begin to run down her face when I went like this by her ears, and I was, I think I was more excited than the pastor. <laughs> it was wonderful. There was one little child that really got your heart. Yeah, that was this, we just went on another trip, and there was a 12-year-old girl at an orphanage of 39 girls, and as we prayed for her, uh, and I say we, my pastor accompanied me this time, and she spoke and began speaking the well, names. Well, previously. She couldn't, she couldn't speak. There was something wrong, and, and I don't have the, the clear uh, diagnosis of what was wrong with her, but everyone was just rejoicing as she was speaking each girl's name, and we had a picture of her, of her just touching her mouth like she couldn't believe that she was speaking, but the Lord set her free from the deafness and the, and the speech problem. Now, now, I'm curious. You, you told me that the Lord touched your hands. When He touched your hands, did you, you feel anything unusual? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. But I just felt an overwhelming peace and sense of, of purpose, like there was something that He wanted for my life. And then I realized that even from the time that I heard those angels as a child, that somehow, by His grace, I had walked into the path that He had prepared for me. And that's one thing that I believe that He has for everyone. It's a purpose and a plan. Through knowing Him and relationship with Him, He has something wonderful for each one of us because we're created for His pleasure. But I, I have to tell you, Joy, I'm overwhelmed with the fact that the Messiah of Israel, 
the Messiah of the whole world thought enough of you who was looking for something from the public to fill this big love need that you had inside. And he gave you these gifts. But I have an idea that all you wanted was his love. That's it. That's it. He poured out his love into me where I didn't need the attention and the applause of people. I had an audience of one in the woods and it changed my life forever. He is all I need. He's all sufficient for every need that I have. My acceptance is found in Jesus Christ. I don't have to look at the world. I don't have to look for on stage for people to, to notice me anymore. He finds me acceptable. He's taken you all <laughs> over the world. He's given you this supernatural gift. You say, well, that's good for her, but what about me? And I tell you, you are as valuable yeah. as joy. You are more valuable than me. I tell you, you have worth. And I can feel the Lord weeping for you because he has a good, wonderful plan for your life. And you're missing your little school. You, you, you feel like something's missing. You don't know what it is. You're reaching, you're groping, you're trying in this area, you're trying in that area. You're not getting what you're looking for. You know that there's something more. And there is. But first, to have that intimacy with God, you have sin. And the way you get rid of sin is believe that Jesus paid the price. He died for you, for your sin, and by his blood, your sins are washed away. Faith is just trusting God for that. Tell him you're sorry for the things you've done wrong, cursing, addictions of any kind, involved in the new age, sex outside of marriage, uh, any of these, you know what sin is. Tell him you're sorry, ask for his blood to forgive you, and then make him your Messiah and Lord. In your words, I've got to see Joy play the piano. I mean, I want to see how a woman that did not know how to play the piano supernaturally got this ability, and guess what? When she plays the piano, expect a miracle right now. Let's go to that. And so when we get that person free, we want to break the power of the generational sins and curses, pray for this heart to be healed, address these lies that have come in through the hurts, and get rid of any oppression from the enemy. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of this. Don't go away. We'll be right back.